Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Dat Destroyer and the Oat Destroyer books, along with the Orgoman products. I am here today with my math professor from college, Professor Lewis Ployce, and he's going to do some really good questions that's going to help you on the Oat and the DAT exam. Hey, Dr. Romano, that's a mighty big book you have there. This is big. This is the new edition of the Advanced Organic Chemistry book by my good friend Mike Smith of University of Connecticut, but not as big as this lecture that Professor Blois is going to do right now. All right. Go to it, Professor. Let's do this big lecture. Okay, we're going to compare quantities here. If uh, Y is negative and X is between zero and the absolute value of Y, then which of the following expressions is negative? Well, we have the following expressions to choose from. Quantity x minus y squared, quantity x plus y squared, quantity y minus x squared, x squared minus y squared, and y squared minus x squared. Well, we're looking for a negative quantity. Right away, we can rule out choices a, b, and c. Why? Because there's a, there's a quantity squared. If, it's a, if a quantity is squared, it cannot be negative. So we can rule out A, B, and C. So the choice is between D and E. Well, we're told that X is less than the absolute value of Y. Well, let's square both sides. We'll still have the same relation. X squared is smaller than the absolute value of Y squared. We don't need the absolute value of bars if we're going to square this at the uh, expression. So it's X squared is less than Y squared. Well, if my choices are limited to choice D and E, if x squared is less than y squared, then I know that y squared minus x squared is going to be positive, and x squared minus y squared, that's the quantity that's going to be negative, so it's choice D. All right, let's move on to this next expression, this next problem of a similar type. If A and B are both negative, and A is larger than B, then which of the following expressions is positive? Okay, and we have these variety, uh, this variety of expressions, uh, a minus b over a plus b, a over b minus b over a, a squared minus b squared over a minus b, and so forth. Now, the trick to this problem, what makes this problem so tricky, is that both a and b are negative. And when it says a is larger than b, that can be confusing. So I suggest a good way to do this is to, to assign a value. How about we say a is equal to negative 1? And if that's larger than negative b, then let's choose a smaller value of negative of b, negative 2. Okay? And I think that'll make the uh, analysis of each one of these expressions a little easier. Well, a minus b is going to be what? Minus 1 minus or minus 2 over a plus b, which is going to be negative 1, negative 2. Well, you can see the numerator here is going to be positive, the denominator is going to be negative, and therefore this whole expression is going to be negative. It's not the first expression, okay? a over b minus b over a. Well, we take our values for a and b. This would be negative 1 over negative 2 minus b over a, which is negative 2 over negative 1. That would be 1 half minus 2, which is again going to be negative. Okay, let's go to the third one. a squared minus b squared. Well, maybe we can factor that. It's the difference of two squares. a plus b times a minus b over a minus b. The a minus b's cancel, and we're left with the expression a plus b. And a plus b is clearly going to be negative. There are two negative values. All right? Uh, finally, over here, p uh, b plus a. What's b plus a going to be? b plus a is negative 3. And what's b minus a? It's minus 2 minus or minus 1. That's going to be negative 3 times what? Negative 1. And that's positive. Finally, we arrived at the expression that is positive, And we don't have to go any further because it's going to be limited to 1. So our choice is d. And we did this simply by substitution. And again, the, the, the assigning of specific values to A and B uh, would, it clarifies the problem enormously because they're both negative, which otherwise can be very confusing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. That's exactly the way I would have done it. I would have picked values, oh, yeah. but I thought you had some kind of mystical oh, no. um, way to go about doing it. But, not this time. Not all right, this time. I would have done that too.
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And Professor Wolf Blois will be back again for more great math problems. Good day to you.